So hello, my name is Stenia Kablač and I work for Red Hat for quite a long time and I actively develop LVM and this talk is going to be presenting what we are going to do with the video and first I would like to know how many of you are familiar with the vid uh, LVM usage, great and video, how many of you have tried the video? I can see the video, folks. So, <laughs> we have, uh, any questions about the technical details of the video, please ask those guys at the end of the room. <laughs> and this talk is going to be mainly about how we will go with LVM and video. So the question there has its meaning, and you will see during the little why. So what we will talk here about. First, I will say a couple words about news in LVM. Then I will mention how the video does work currently with the users. Then I will remind how LVM works with thin provisioning because the video is kind of same. So it will give you a better understanding why we have chosen the way we have used. So, and then we will see how LVM presents video device to the user. And if there will be enough time, I have a demo script. So you can see it's really actually doing something. It's just not a talk. Uh, so for the news, uh, there are some changes. It's even visible in this number three. It's great progress. We have switched from number dot two point, uh, dot zero dot two to number three. So th there are some changes and the main focus was done on dropping some features which almost nobody was using because the world is changing. So uh, CLVMD is basically gone. So whoever was using CLVMD uh, needs to find the replacement. We provide something called uh, LVM LockD, which is a locking daemon, but it's something different. So uh, it should be simply more simple than CLVMD, but uh, some tools need to be written yet. So LV method e was another problematic piece. It's also gone. Uh, some old formats, LVM1 and pool format support are also gone. LVM API uh, also removed. And the assumption is that we will in some way provide Dbus API. So we are always asked when we, there will be API. So our Dbus is some sort of uh, trial to move to the desired direction. And uh, unlike in past, uh, Git now has a number of branches. We will try to make it more easier for users to understand which branch to pick and which branch to play with. Currently, there is something called stable branch. And there are a few of them. And yeah. So currently the head is the only one which provides the support for the video. So if you want to try the video yourself, you need to go with the head, but be aware that the head is, might not be the most stable thing you will try to use. So <coughs> what you can see in the head uh, is the few new targets. One is the video support, and the other one is the fried cache. Uh, this talk will be about the video, so uh, what you need to know about. Currently, the video target is still not in upstream kernel, so it's partly your own task to install everything. If you are on the Fedora, you can use the Andrews Walsh uh, copper repository, which provides uh, tools and kernel modules. Uh, so there are two kernel modules, KVideo and UDS, and to install them with the Fedora 29, it should be quite straightforward. To install them with the Rawhide, you still need to uh, apply some force. And since the kernel developers moved to enforce uh, that there is no stack usage in the kernel, uh, the VLA option in GCC, and the video is still using it, you need to disable particular warning in the, in the build. So only smart guys will pass, basically. <laughs> uh, so what is the video about? Uh, the main uh, aspect or main features are these two. 
deduplication and compression. And it's all being done on, on the 4K block sizes. What are the minor problems is that unlike with thin provisioning, uh, there are no snapshots yet. So there is some, some pluses and some minuses compared with the existing thin provisioning we have in LVM. And what do you need to do on LVM side? Uh, video is not yet packaged unless you are using the RHEL 8. And so for installing the video from LVM side, we need to configure with this option. And you also need to have installed video tools, particularly video format, to have the uh, formatting of the metadata being done by that. And you can check yourself if your LVM is capable to support video by, by this single command, which will list all supported commands on your uh, LVM installation. And if there is a video, you can go on with uh, trying what we can do. So let's get back to how we support thin provisioning. Uh, so it's good for uh, reminding how the LVM treats uh, virtual volumes. So the first thing is that we have some name, name, names. We have data volumes, metadata volumes for thin pool. We have thin pool itself and we have thin volumes. Uh, all such devices have some types. So data volumes and metadata volumes could be any array type, linears, and so on. Thin pool is a thin pool type and thin volume, is, uh, thin volume itself is thin type. Then there are some switches like thin and t, uh, dash t, which are shortcuts and do some smart stuff around it. So it's more simple to, for users to use. And basic commands you need to know about is VG create, where you create your VG, LD create, where you create a thin pool together with thin volume. And now the major part is that we have the size, which is the physical size, and we have a virtual size, which is uh, specifying the thin volume size. So we already have a concept where you have uh, something with physical size where you use chunks and you have a virtual volume which is mapping those chunks. So the virtual size typically could be much bigger than the uh, physical size. And for thin, thin pools you can pick uh, chunks, chunk sizes. So you can start with 64K and you can go up to I think two gigabytes or some, one gigabyte I think. So for video, there is a difference. The 4K block size is fixed and you cannot change it. That's why uh, thin pool has slightly different targeting audience than the video. So basic supported commands, you can create as many thin volumes as you want. You just need to set the virtual size. You name the thin volume and you pick the pool you want to use it. You can, of course, resize the thin pool. You can resize the data separately. You can resize the metadata separately. You can resize the thin volume as well. And you can take snapshots. I think all users are familiar with the activation, deactivation. You can even convert existing thin volume, uh, th uh, volumes to thin pools and so on. So since this talk is going to be about, about the video, let's go on and remind what how the existing video commands are working. So basically these are the most known used commands. So you have a tool called video and video takes some parameters. Uh, if so, let's start with the creation. You typically pass in the de device which has some size and you pass a logical size which is in terms of LVM virtual size. So th that needs to be seen that LVM slightly change it or ha has a different meaning when we talk about sizes. So what is on video called logical size, we have as a virtual size. So then you have the commands to activate, deactivate. You have the commands to grow your logical and your physical size. So this is the difference that the physical size is the size of your device you use as a backend. And the logical size is the size you use for your MakeFS. And you have commands to enable disable compression. You have commands to enable disable deduplication. S starting, stopping devices you can remove, of course. Uh, it's worth to know that unlike with LVM, video is storing its metadata in a file system, in a file. So 
you have to have access to the file system to properly activate the video volume. Um, removing, and then, then you have those tools for formatting the video, which is usually run aut automatically by this command. So you don't have to really know what this command is doing. But if you are interested, you should check out the man page for this tool. And there are a lot of options which are going to be same for LVM. So LVM is trying to not introduce any new names. It will use the same naming for the same options inside. So, and then there is a very good command, which we still try to use also with LVM. It's the video stat, which basically takes the reporting of statistics from CCFS and presents it in some nice um, view. So what is the LVM termino terminology so vi for videos? Um, we have the same as with thin pools. So you have a data volume. With video, data volume is also containing the metadata. So it's a mixture where data and metadata interleaved in some magical way to provide that online deduplication and compression. And then we have the terminology from pools. So we have something called video pool. So again, we introduce a new type called video pool. And we have introduced a new type called video LV, which is going to be our virtual LV. So how the existing video is using devices. You have your physical device, like your SDA, and you have a video device, which actually encapsulates two devices at once. It has a size for usage of your physical device, and it has your virtual size. So it's like two in ones. So with LVM, it's going to be slightly different. You have your physical device, which is your PV, which is used for your VG. On top of it, we allow you to create a data LV, which can be actually um, even a RAID volume or something like that. So it doesn't have to necessarily be a single mapping. And on top of it, we uh, provide a virtual mapping, which is that pool volume. It has some virtual size. It could be, I don't know, 10 times bigger or whatever. And on top of it, we will, at this moment, support only single video LV. But in the future, there will be multiple video LVs usable from a single video pool. Why? Uh, because there is that sharing and, and net duplication. So if you ha will have multiple LVs which do use similar data, there is a big chance that you will be able to deduplicate them <coughs> within the same thin pool. So at this moment, existing implementation provides only a single video LV, but I think it's already usable because as we have heard, most customers at this moment are using just a single uh, video device. And on top of it, they use a big file system and do a lot of sharing inside the file system. So uh, it's still quite usable even in, in this uh, stage. So as you can see, there are a few more devices. There are there's, uh, some slightly bigger overhead. But if you think in terms of that on top of the video device, you would be creating LVs, it suddenly becomes equivalent or even better. So basic commands. OK, we have the LV create. Type video, or you can use the shortcut video. You say the name and you say the sizes. Here, you specify the size of the data volume, and with the virtual size, just like with Hintplus, you specify the virtual size for your virtual video LV. We will use for your commands. There is a very important notice that please do not try to use these cards unless you really need to, because um, this card is at this moment quite slow. <sighs> Profiles, well, these are those fancy options you can try to set up. I will not go into details. You need to be well uh, familiar with video, what that means. So see the man pages. How we present uh, videos to the user. As you can see, there is that virtual LV. There is the pool, and there is the data LV. You can see that the size of physical size of volume is 10, 10 G. Uh, video LV itself has 20G, and this is after MacFS, so one slightly, few, few bits are used. So 
reference for the video pool, and that's it. You can also convert existing LVs into the data volume, so you can take any rate volume and convert it to the video pool and use it for the video volumes. If you do not specify here the virtual size, uh, LVM will compute the maximum size that will definitely hold any U, U random data, so it will be surely b much smaller than the than 10G in this case. It would be like I don't know, I like six. 6G or something like that, so because the metadata will not be uh, usable for writing the uh, UDEF random and there is no way to deduplicate and compress these data, so you, so the actual available space is much uh, smaller. So if you are going to store the UDEF random content in your devices, do not use the video, it doesn't make any sense. Uh, so changes of states like deduplication, compression, of course we have the LV change command, Activation state, deactivation state, all here are familiar with the LV, basic LVM usage, so <coughs> no surprise how that works. Um, LV resize, uh, this is, I think, even not yet committed. Oh, resize is committed. So you can resize data volume, you can, of course, resize uh, video LV. We do plan to add uh, support for the V option, so it, it's more like understand what users that they can specify the virtual size, like bigger virtual size. But at this moment, you use the dash L. So yeah, reduce is um, available only for the virtual volume. You cannot reduce the data volume. So once you grow big, you cannot go back with the datas. But with the video LV, you can reduce. And the reduced part is discarded, basically. So the reduce operation uh, is going to take time. We will try to figure out some mechanism how to do it like out of sight, but we will see. Trim is so far still program. Um, you can have uh, the monitoring for DMVND, so DMVND can, just like with pools, they can take care about auto resizing. So if you enable the uh, monitoring, you will, you can set your threshold. So if the video pool becomes too full, like over 90% or something like that, you can specify how, how it should be extended. You can even specify your uh, command, so you can do your own stuff, like uh, discarding, dropping, whatever. And so let's reference the uh, where you can get some informations. Basically, LVM has uh, this style of one pages. So there's one page for eight, there's one page for ten. So now there is one page for video. So basically, all the stuff from this presentation should be accessible here. Um, mm, good explanation of all the video variables should be also found here, and or you can try this command, which will print out all the info about those configurables in LVM. Future, well, as you can see, it's hard to currently use it out of the box. You have to compile yourself, you have to install yourself, unless you use real distribution, so Fedora users do have to install that copper repo, install the modules, install the tools, and compile uh, LVM. As said, we want to do a multiple volumes from a single video pool, and we want to enhance the stacking, so there my local um, Git has more stacking support, but still it's not perfect, so enhance stacking. Basically, these are the resources, and we have a few minutes for a demo and then questions. So let's try to see how it works. I have just prepared the scripts, so So volume is already there, and as you can see, when you create a, um, a volume, uh, we detect if there are any signatures left. So if you want to override them, fine. So here you can see it empty. If you create a 6G uh, video pool, 3G are only left for user. The rest is the overhead of video pool. 
but these are the small configurations uh, I'm using just for testing with small, small, small devices. So when we specify a size here, virtual size, again we continue wiping, we create one, uh, we get one G uh, video, and how this is looks in SBK, SB, BLK, uh, there is the data volume, pool, and video. So these are those three devices which are on top of SDA three. So we run make FS, no, no discard, so it should be fast. And you can see that the usage takes or eats some space. Then we mount the volume and we try to write some random content in terms of uh, 236 gigab uh, megabytes. So it, it, you, you can see it takes some time. It's not uber fast. So there is some slowdown, and you can see like 25% has been used of your 1G. So now do a copy of that file and do a random copy file. So you have two files which, which have the same size and they are copied. So again, you can see the timing and you can see that hopefully the size uh, um, ch checksums will match, so yeah. And you can see we are still in 25%. So the duplication works. And you have a lot of space still to use. So you can basically make a, your file system much bigger and the, si and the used space will be effi more efficiently used. So let's unmount. Uh, let's run BLK discard. So it, it's like five seconds to discard this 1G device on, on my slow machine. So if you have a very fast Intel, it's faster, but it still uh, need to be, you uh, usually need to be aware that the discard is not the fastest operation. So of course you can resize the video. So yeah, easily. You can reduce and you can see that uh, LVM is just asking about confirmation that there is part is, uh, is removed, so you need to be sure that the data there are uh, lost. So if you want to reduce your file system, be, uh, be sure that you either do it yourself or you add option dash R. And you can see that LVM will try and warn that it's discarding the area. So if you, if you make a mistake, you cannot go back, you cannot resize back and expect that there will be data. Uh, data are gone. So yeah, it's not the fastest, but it works. And you can see we are back to 9G, nine, nine basically. And you can upsize the pool, the volume as well. Yeah, so 9G, nine 9G, nine nice. Yeah. You can see that the free space has grown. So used space uh, dropped to 33%. And uh, as for the stacking, you can, for example, cache your uh, video pool, so you can just specify the cache size. You can probably add the name of the device you want to use for the caching. You can set the size, you, you say the cache, and volume is cached. And suddenly you will see way more devices. But if you are not showing those hidden devices, it's, it's still quite usable. So if you want to see all the details, you will get them. If you want to see just the usable vol volumes, just use the RDS. Of course, the uncaching works. And you can also cache your video device. So you have to pick whether you want to cache before the duplication or after the duplication. So cho choice is yours. Both have its use cases. And that's probably about it. So. If you have any questions, go on. Yeah, so probably no questions. <laughs> and so you can contact me later on. Thank you. Yeah.